everyone it's Kathy and you're back here at Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. Welcome in. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Uh, as many of you already know I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator and I'm located here in the beautiful state of North Carolina. If you're not currently working with a demonstrator and you're in love with anything Stamping Up please reach out to me. I would absolutely love the opportunity to earn your business. Now today we're going to center in on how to make this beautiful gateful card but the um, emphasis is not on the gatefold but be rather the belly band because when you take this off all of your beautiful decoration is on this belly band very simple to make so much fun but then when you open your card we have a beautiful birthday message as well as a happy birthday on the outside we always are needing birthday cards and who doesn't love to send a card that has a wow factor now I'm going to show you the products that we're going to use to make this uh, and I'm going to flip to it in my catalog first because I want to show you the entire suite of the sun here we go this is the sun um, print collection and in the collection you get the stamps the dies the designer series paper and an embossing folder now i did not use the embossing folder but i used everything else in here plus a little extra here and there so we're going to go ahead and get started on this uh here is the bundle if you choose not to get the collection and say you didn't want the paper but i can't understand why anybody wouldn't want that gorgeous paper uh you can bundle this and you can save uh 10% over buying them separate. So if you're in love with this stamp and die set, I'll go ahead and purchase them both and you'll save 10%. Um, many times customers will order just the stamp set and after they get it, they'll be like, oh, I wish I had ordered those dies. They'll go back and order the dies. This is when you will spend 10% more. If you bundle it and order the dies at the same time you order the stamp set or vice versa, you um, if you um, you'll spend 10% more that way but if you use the bundle number and make sure you use the bundle number because if you put them in as two separate items they're still going to charge you separately so you need to use that bundle number and that will give you that 10% off now let's take a look at this stunning stunning paper now the the sun prints is all in blue uh, blues and grays is the theme of uh, you've got dark navy blues almost black um, you have the grays and the blues and the stripes and I mean it's just a gorgeous pack of paper but say blue and gray is not your thing um, there's another pack of paper in the catalog that I think is overlooked called pretty prints and pretty prints has that same wash effect and has that same look as the um, the sun prints but in different colors so you get one two three sheets of the soft succulent you get three sheets of the rich razzleberry you get three sheets of the calypso coral and you get three sheets of the evening evergreen so this is another way that you can make this card but say you don't want to do it in blue you could do it with this paper and it would be just as stunning uh, if not more so so that gives you an option with the two um, the two sets of papers so I'm going to show you what we're going to need to make this card you're going to need some pieces and I have a piece of vellum and I believe my vellum measures um, four by four so just a plain piece of vellum four by four we're going to do some die cutting with that you're going to need a card base that is um, eight and a half by five and a half and we're going to do some scoring on this in just a minute you're going to need two panels to go on each side, each front of the card, and these panels are five and a half by two inches. So two by five. I'm not too sure if these aren't five and an eighth. They are. So five and one eighth. So those two, then you're going to need a belly band, and this is just cut out of basic white, and it is 11 inches by one and a half. Then you're going to need a piece for your inside sentiment, and this piece is um, 
four by five and one fourth. And you're going to need some um, colored cardstock. And I suggest using the Knight of Navy, uh, like your card is. And I have some scraps over here of some whites and some uh, navy blues or Knight of Navy, so that we can have some pieces to work with if we need them. And we will need them. So just leave those to the side. And one other thing that I used, I used the um, Peaceful Moments because I used the Happy Birthday from this stamp set. So we can lay that over to the side. And let's, let's do our stamping first, then we'll do our die cutting, and then we'll assemble. So the first thing you're going to want to do is on your piece of white, this is your inside piece, we're going to grab the Nature's Prints. I'm going to get a little piece of scrap paper to put under here just like that. I just tore my grid mat off because it was a little bit nasty and um, I didn't want to I didn't want to stamp on that and so uh, I'm going to try to keep this one clean as long as possible. All right let's go ahead and grab a stamp block and put this up on it and I'm going to grab one that I know is big enough to accommodate that stamp and I'll turn it over and I'm using the Knight of Navy uh, ink pad and I'm going to ink this up. Just like that. And we're just going to stamp this down in this bottom corner, right about here. And give it a good, good press. Like so. Now I am going to get my chamois out because I want to clean my stamps as I go. Um, I can't stress how important it is to not leave your stamps inked. Uh, they will clean much easier if you do them as soon as you uh, use them. So that is done. Now we want to put a sentiment up there and I chose these are the moments that we'll look back on with joy. And we're going to put that right about here. No, I'm sorry. It's going to be this one. Wishing you every happiness on your special day. All right, I'm going to grab another stamp block. Oops. <laughs> And I'm going to pick this up. And y'all know I like to do this. I like to even this out on my grid mat. Let me move this so you can see what I'm doing. I like to get this on my grid mat nice and even. And then pick it up. So let's bring this back over. I'm going to ink up my sentiment for the inside. And I'm going to stamp it right about here. Just like that. So now our inside piece is done. And let's clean this off. Now we're going to do some heat embossing. And a lot of times people get very intimidated when you when they hear the word heat embossing. It's really not a bad um, technique. It's really fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this stamp. And for my heat embossing, I need to use some specialty products. The Versamark. Um, watermark stamp pad which is a clear watermark ink that stays very sticky so anything that touches it's going to stick to it like um, glitter um, the gold leafing um, tape whatever that you decide to use in this case we're going to be using the Versamark ink we're going to be using an embossing buddy this is an anti-static tool, and we're going to be using some white embossing powder. So, I am going to take and open up my Versamark ink, and I'm going to ink up the stamp really good. Just like that, and then I want to stamp this right here.
and I'm going to give this a really good press because I want that ink to transfer really good because we're going to put embossing powder over it and I want to make sure that it gets all of those little nooks and crannies in that um, beautiful leaf pattern and that did not turn out good all right <coughs> I can turn that over I think I'll turn it over and re-ink it <coughs> and say so sorry y'all um, I know the tree pollen has subsided somewhat but something has got me um, very um, congested and tickly <coughs> forgive me <laughs> It usually starts in my throat and it will work its way up into my sinuses and then the next thing I know I'm sneezing um, okay I'll be right back I'm gonna go and try to take care of this and I'll be right back all right I am back and hopefully this is much better and I won't be sneezing anymore um, I've kind of had to clear out my sinuses and um, hopefully I'll be better now let's hope so it's kind of a good thing I had a pause because I forgot to use my embossing buddy when I stamped over here and this did not turn out good because I have a line around the bottom edge of that that would have caught the embossing powder so we don't want that so I'm going to use my um, my anti-static embossing buddy and Stamping Up no longer carries these, but you can pick those up at most craft stores. Sometimes they even have them in the Dollar Tree, or you can make your own. If you have um, uh, some cornstarch, or um, yeah, cornstarch works the best. Just put it in a little um, piece of fibrous material and sew the ends up and you can have your make your very own embossing buddy all right i cleaned my stamp so we're going to go in again this time i'm going to try not to be as as um um heavy-handed and i'm going to stamp just on top of this image i'm not scrunching it i'm not i'm just touching on top of the image all right Let's hope that that will do it and then when I put it down on here I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna try not to be as heavy-handed I'm just gonna mash gently that looks much better so uh, I'm going to get one more stamp. I'm going to need another piece of that um, cardstock as well. But I think we can get the fern, this piece right here, right about there. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that up like so. We're going to do the same thing with this one. We're just going to go ahead and ink it up using the Versamark Watermark ink. stamp one of these let's go this direction well that turned out beautiful absolutely gorgeous okay I'm going to grab another piece of the Knight of Navy cardstock get my trimmer because I don't need the whole piece I just need a half of this so it's really a quarter sheet of cardstock so I'm going to cut that down to four and one fourth and we're going to get the rest of our stamping out of this so I need one more of these and one more of those oops wrong ink so let's do this one
very good. And now let's do the fawn again. And we will after we heat emboss these. And you know I didn't use my heat and my embossing buddy on this piece. Ah, oh well. We will survive. We'll hope that it doesn't stick too bad to that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and just wipe these stamps off really quick. Set those up there out of the way. Alright, we got that done. Now, I am going to bring over my white embossing powder. And I keep mine in a container like this. It just makes it so much easier. And I'm going to do this one first since I stamped it first. And let's hope that's going to... Oh, that, that picked it up pretty good, didn't it? So now let's do the fern. And you can see how that watermark ink is just a really sticky ink that allows you to... Um, heat emboss on it. Let's put a little bit more on that and try to pick up a little bit more white. And I'm going to take my, I have a little paintbrush that I use and when I have places like that, see where it picked up powder, I'm just going to brush that away. I don't need that. Alright, so now let's do the other piece and this is the piece I'm worried about because I did not use the embossing buddy on it. So let's see what happens. Yeah, it will stick more on this than it will the other one. Places you don't want it to stick. But I've got my little brush so I can brush away any of these little places that I don't want that embossing powder. And I think we can get a fairly good image on this. So that is what we need to do for that. And let, before we start using our heat gun, I, might, I like to make sure that I put my embossing powder away. And I don't think we're going to need that ink anymore, so let's go ahead and get that out of our way. Now I have a little wooden board that I use, and I've got embossing powder right here on, on it. I think I can probably scrape that off. What I need to do is put a new piece of foil on this, but using this allows me to blow directly down and I don't have to worry about warping my mat. This is nothing but a little board, that a uh, cutting board, a bamboo cutting board that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And I just covered it with some uh, aluminum foil. So as you can see, this makes for a great way and I'm gonna, this is my heat tool. You do need a heat tool, not a blow dryer, but a a dedicated heat tool for embossing and stamping up carries one and this one's really nice because you have two speeds one and two anytime you're heat embossing you want to use it on number two so I'm gonna let it heat up for just a minute it is gonna be noisy so just bear with me um, if you have never heat embossed um, get with me and let me know and I will do a video just on heat embossing uh, because it's a beautiful effect and it adds so much to your um, your cards or any of your your crafting pieces. So I'm going to do this one first. So what we're going what we're looking for is that embossing powder to melt, melt and turn very shiny. And it won't take long for it to do that. And you start to see it melting now. It's going from that matte gray to a beautiful shiny white. I like to hold it up and do the back side as well. That helps with any warping. All right, that piece is done, so now I'm going to bring this piece in. This one will go faster because my gun's already good and hot.
And I'm going to bring, turn this over, but I'm not going to lay it flat on that foil. I'm just going to do like that, and then we can lay that over there, and we are done with our noisy um, heat tool. The only bad thing about heat embossing is the noise factor, but it is so worth it with the effect that you get. And, I mean, look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? So now we're ready to do some die cutting. Uh, and I have a couple of things. I like this piece of vellum that I showed you. We are going to use the dies. Um, let me move some stuff out of my way. Let's get everything that we're going to cut. Um, move that piece out of my way. And let's bring over our stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I'm going to open this up. Let me zoom y'all out a little bit. So you can see the full effect. And I have my plates all here. And I'm using the new magnetic plate. So I have a number one. Number five is the, is the magnetic plate. So that goes on next. And then I have one uh, number three um, top cutting plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it out like that. I'm going to grab my dies, and I have all the dies I'm going to use laying on top of this. So the first thing I want to do, let's go ahead and cut that vellum. So I'm going to put the vellum right there, and I'm going to lay this piece on it like so. And I've got a couple of little pieces that I want to cut out as well, so we can get a couple of those out of the middle of this. No need to waste that vellum, right? I love vellum. I think it, it adds such an elegance to any of your uh, cards. Let's see if we can get one. I think we can get one right here. Sometimes you have to manipulate where you put them. Yeah, that should work right there. And that's three of them. Okay, that's all three of those. So I want to go ahead and put this on. And I can cut two of these in one shot, which is fantastic. What's so nice about this is I can I can run these through. And I'm going to get right over here so I can make sure I get this centered up as good as I possibly can. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I want to make sure I get it on there just like I want it. Um, there we go. Then we're going to lay our cutting plate over top. And we're going to crank it through. Sometimes vellum needs two passes. Let's see how this did. Oops, I'm dropping a die. That's That worked. Let's get that off of there. My two little pieces. Now all of my pieces that cut out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay them right over here, kind of out of the way, until we get everything cut. And see, there's hardly any waste in there. So we're going to pull this up. Look how beautifully that cut. One pass, just one pass through my machine. Um, this this stamp and cut and emboss machine is absolutely the bomb because it cuts beautifully. So I'm going to lay this over here along with that. And then let's go ahead and pop out those little pieces. And then we have this one little piece right there. So, oops, I dropped it in here. There we go. Now let's go ahead and lift these up. And these cut out beautifully as well. So we have those. I'm laying all my die cut pieces over here because we're going to need to do a little bit more die cutting. Um, let's clean our 
mat off. So I'm just going to take this to my trash can and rake all of those little pieces off of there. I don't want any of that raised up pieces when I push it through again because it can distort. So I always, and I don't know if this is a necessity, it's just me, I always make sure that my plate is completely free of any scraps or debris before I push through my next piece. And a lot of times with vellum, it'll take a little bit of extra cleaning on it. You might need to get a little spatula or something just to loosen up some of those little pieces like that. That looks really good. So now I'm going to take this piece, which was just like the other one, and I am going to put my dies back over it again, making sure I get them nice and even over my piece. Do the same thing for this bigger one. And it's so easy to do that with this new magnetic mat. So if you have not gotten this magnetic mat, um, you are doing yourself an injustice because this thing is wonderful. So I'm making sure everything is nice and lined up and then I'm going to put my cover plate on and crank it through. This thing just cuts like butter. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Alright, so now we have these pieces are cut. Beautiful. So pretty. All right, so now we need to put some white up here. We need to do a little bit of white. And our white pieces are going to be these two. Oops, of course I drop it. Okay. You know, as we get older, even bending from the chair can sometimes be difficult. It is so crazy. When they say that youth is wasted on the young, that is such a true statement. Oh my goodness. All right, for these, I'm just going to take a little scrap of white and just lay those on there. They can just go willy-nilly. I want to put this piece on for my sentiment, and I have room right here to get that other one. So I like being able to cut multiples in one pass. It saves time and effort. So we'll just crank those through. And then we can pull these off. Just like that. All right, so we, we've got these pieces cut. So again, I'm going to lay them over with my other uh, die cut pieces. And we need one more piece that we need to die cut. So let me get those off and this one off. And now we're going to take our Knight of Navy and we're going to cut another one of our little framelits. So I'm going to turn it a, a bit to an angle and put that in and crank it through. Toby. Just like that. And now we should have all of our pieces die cut. So there is that piece. So I'm going to lay that over here. Let's go ahead and get our stuff and cut. Toby, no. Sorry about that. All right, let me go ahead and get this taken care of and we'll get we'll gather right back up. I need to clean some stamps, clear my um, my place, and then we're going to go ahead and put this card together. I'm going to show you just how beautiful it's going to be. Be right back. So now, as you can see, I have all of my pieces laid out here for us to assemble our card. So the first thing we want to do is look at our card base. And this piece is uh, eight and a half by five and a half. And we're going to do some scoring to make this a really cute little gatefold card. So if you have the, um, the stamping up trimmer you can score right with your tr on your trimmer if you don't you can score it on your scoreboard the score marks are going to be the same so i'm going to just use my trimmer so we're going to score this at two and one eighth and if you're wondering where the one eighth is if your uh, board is is broken down into fourths an eighth is half of one fourth so i'm going to go 
to that middle line in between the two and one fourth. So you'll have an eighth on that side and an eighth on that side. So that is two and one eighth. And so I'm going to move my cutting blade out of my way and I'm going to score that at two and one eighth. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to put it back in and score it at two and one eighth on this side. And you might want to come just, well, we'll do it at two and one eighth. Okay. And give it a good score. And if you notice that the way I scored it, I made sure that I scored on the same side because I like to, um, you have an indentation here and you have a bump on this side. Always fold in on the bump side and I'll tell you why. It gives you a perfect fold when you do that. So I'm just going to fold that over. I'm going to take my bone folder and give that a really good burnish just like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here and we're going to have a nice folded card when we're done. So just like that. And there is our gatefold. So now we have these two pieces that are cut. All of these measurements will be in the description. So this piece is five and one eighth by two inches. And both of these pieces are going to go on just like so. So we're just going to put those on and you can use glue, you can use stamp and seal, you can use two-sided tape uh, or tear and tape, whichever works for you. For me, I'm going to use a tiny bit of liquid glue and I'm going to use my fine tip bottle for this because it allows me more control over the amount of glue that I'm putting down. Uh, let's see if my little fine tip is going to work for me. I may have to take a needle and just run into it. Sometimes it'll get a little clog in it and you can very easily clear that clog just by um, by doing just running a needle inside of it. So let's see if we've got a flow nail. Yep, there it comes. And like I said I just well you know what Let's do something different. I'm just going to use my fine tip glue bottle right here. And I know this one is going to give me the fine amount of glue that I want. And then we're just going to bring this over. And I'm going to decide which way I want it going. And I think like this. And I am going to put that down, making sure I have that tiny little border all the way around. Press it down. That side is on. Now we're going to do the same thing on this one. Again, I'm going to look. I want that side going in that direction. So just look at your paper and make sure that it's going in the orientation it was meant to. And that's going to go in just like that. Now let's go ahead and open our card. And on the inside, we are going to put our four by five and one fourth piece. And we're just going to center that up right like that. I think I'm going to use stamp and seal for that. want to do is make sure that I get this nice and centered. And that looks really good. So there's our, our card. Now what we need to do is work on our belly band. I'm going to leave that glue open because I'm going to use that on my belly band. Now this piece is 11 inches by I believe one and a half. Yes. 11 by one and a half. Now you probably don't need it quite 11, 
but I like to give myself a, a good little amount to wrap. So I am going to put this in and I'm going to just kind of eyeball center. And then I'm just going to fold it around. I'm going to hold it right there and fold it around and hold it, hold it. And then I'm just going to kind of give it a press. Now I'm going to double check and make sure that this will freely go up and down our card. Once I'm pleased with that, I am going to put some adhesive. And I think what I'm going to do is make myself a little pencil mark. Just a tiny little pencil mark. That's going to let me know that I don't let need my adhesive to go any any further than that. And I'm going to use some stamp and seal. So I'm going to go here. There. And if you go over the edge, just roll it back onto itself. It works perfectly. Just like that. Make sure that's up. I'm going to go ahead and erase that pencil mark while I'm here. It's really not going to matter because we're going to have that all covered up anyway. Now I'm just going to lay this down, making sure that this is even this way, and then just give it a good press. So there is your belly band. And as you can see, it moves freely up and down. So now we're going to put all of our emphasis on decorating the belly band. The first thing that I want to do is I want to bring this piece and I want to make sure that I'm putting adhesives here and here. Maybe I want it, yeah, I want it like this. So, in order to get that to stay down where I need it, I am going to put some glue dots and I'm going to put them actually onto my um, my belly band. I think this will work better for me. So I'm going to lift one up using my Take Your Pick tool. And I want this one to go here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit this down about where I want that to land. And I want it something like this. So once I get one side of it down, then I can pretty much see where I need my other glue dot to go. And you're only going to need two glue dots to hold this down for right now. So I'm going to come over on this side, and I think right there under that leaf, I am going to put that glue dot right there. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just pushing it under the piece of vellum so that it's not sticky on the top. So that is, let me zoom y'all in just a little bit. So that is where we're at with this. So that's going to be, everything's going to build around this. So the next thing I want to do is I want to bring a piece of this in and I want to pop this up. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to grab some Stampin' Dimensionals. I may have to open a pack. Let's see if I have any more big ones back here. Um, those are minis. Uh, oh well. well, let's use some minis since I have these out. So what I'm going—we're going to need minis in, anyway in a minute. So I'm just going to go ahead and strategically place some glue dots um, or some uh, mini dimensionals, I should say. And you could use glue dots too if you wanted to, but I want this to have a little lift. So I want it to come down in here about like that. And I think I'm going to want one here and one here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and pull off my backers.
and then we can take this larger focal piece and put it just like that and these will look different whichever ones you do because they are different and every time that you build something like this it's going to look a little bit different than the one before so I want this piece to come maybe right under here kind of sticking out in this direction or maybe over here so I'm going to lift that up and adhere that right under there so that gives us a nice little piece there now I'm going to put some glue or a dimensional underneath that one so let's just grab one of these and I'm going to bring that up high pull that backer off and tack that down just that simple let me get those little pieces I'm going to put those over there out of the way now I want to make sure that this is adhering to this so in order to do that I'm going to put a, um, a dimensional right there on that little piece so what you're going to need to do is just strategically um, look where you need a glue dot or a dimensional and then put it down And I like to glue it to my vellum to make sure that it's not going to be sticky underneath. And there, that's good. And we have another one of these, but you know, I don't think I'm going to need to use that. I think it's going to be an overkill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the other one of the ferns and I want to decide exactly where I want that one to be so I'm going to lift these up that's what's so forgiving with these glue dots they are very very forgiving so we're gonna or not, I'm sorry dimensionals my stamp and my mini dimensionals we're gonna put that piece out right there then I've got these little sprigs of white and I want one of those sticking up right about here and I think I want the other one maybe coming off right there. And see how pretty that is. And it's not going to look like this one. You can see that they are looking quite different depending on where you put your pieces. And, and that's okay with me. That's kind of what I want. Now this vellum, I'm going to use a tiny bit of glue on the back and the front of these. And I'm just going to tuck those every here and there just to let them stick up a little bit. And we have three of those. So here's another one. Well, I thought I had three. What did I do with the other one? Well, you know what? We've got enough going on on here that I think two will be sufficient. And I'm going to stick that one right about there. Isn't this pretty? Oh, here's the other one. So we can do one right about here. So I'm going to lift that up and I want that to be poking out from underneath that larger piece. So how I'm going to do that is I'm just putting glue on the front of that and I'm going to stick it under, just give it a press and hold it. Now there's all of our little fun bits. So we need to do a little bit more stamping. So I, I got the Happy Birthday from the Peaceful Moment stamp set. That was the same place that I got the inside sentiment. So we're using that for our sentiments. And I'm going to stamp it again in this Night of Navy ink. I'm kind of keeping that as my theme throughout. And let's make sure I don't have any debris on here a nice little happy birthday right there on that banner beautiful I'm going to go ahead and close up this ink pad 
And I'm gonna grab my chamois and just give this a quick little clean. And now we cut one of these blue ones and I wanna show you what I wanna do with it. I'm gonna take a pair of shears and I'm gonna cut this completely in half all the way down. And what I wanna do is I wanna center that up just like that and just like that. And see how pretty that's going to look on there. So what I want to do now, I think I might use glue dots again. I'm going to take a glue dot and put right in the middle there. And another one right in the middle here. And then I'm just going to sit this down Sometimes you can do get this on better if you just lift it up and hold it where you want it. And like that. So now that I got that on with the glue dot, I am actually going to go under the edges and put some liquid glue. Just like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to raise that up and get a little extra glue right in here. And then press that down. And we're going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals on the back of this. Notice I'm putting them right in the middle where that differentiates because there is a difference in the height from here to here and that's like a little gully right there. So that's why I chose to do it that way. Now we're going to take our happy birthday and adhere it right about there. Look how pretty that's going to be. So let me grab that little take your pick tool again and let's go ahead and wrangle these off. Just like that. And now we're going to put this down right about there. Give it a good press. Now we're going to look and make sure that nothing is sticking. So I'm running my hand behind here just to make sure that I have nothing that is going to stick to my card. And if you do find that you have a place that's a little sticky, I'll show you how to get around that. We're going to take that Take Your Pick tool and we're just going to press in off of those pieces and kind of get them shoved back under there so they're not sticky on the front. sticky on the back. I think we're good. So let's bring our card back over and we can slide our belly band on. And I like to, bring, when they're this busy, I like to bring them down to the bottom just a little bit. And look how gorgeous this card is. And if you wanted to add even more to it, you could easily put this right there and glue it down and it would be in place. I think I like that. I didn't do that on the other one, but I think I'm going to do it on this one. That just gives you a little extra something right here. So let's go ahead and just glue this directly down. So I'm going to put glue all over the back. 
I'll tell you what, this is a beautiful stamp set. And I think it would pair absolutely beautiful with Forever Fern, which did carry over. I'm just going to lay my hand on that and let it dry. And now let's slide our belly band back over. Oh yeah, isn't that gorgeous? That just adds a little extra something something. And you know I love that something something extra. <laughs> All right, people, that that worked out really good. I love the way this card turned out. Um, I hope that you did. I need to do a little sweep here. It feels like I've got embossing powder or something all over my work surface, and I don't like that feeling at all. So I am going to take and put this back around just like that, just like that. And that is our card for today. I hope you love it as much as I do. I hope it's something that you would maybe want to try. And if you want to get any of these products, the beautiful paper, vellum, the um, Knight of Navy cardstock, our basic white cardstock, embossing powder, um, Versamark ink, our Knight of Navy stamping pad, all of these items will be listed with the order number beside of them in the description below. So thank you so much for tuning in. I would certainly appreciate your business if you would love to make this card. Um, it is stunning. So uh, reach out to me. We also have that special going on right now where you can receive an additional $66.50 worth of product absolutely free. It includes this beautiful grid paper that I, a grid mat that I have here, uh, an entire pack of it. It's a, it is a good size pack of uh, grid paper in all of our new ink colors. You will get all five of the in color full size ink pads, uh, an assortment pack of our in color cardstock, and one pack of the designer series paper. That all retails at $66.50 plus you will get uh, to choose out of either our mini catalog or our regular um, new annual catalog, $125. You get all of that for $99, free shipping. The only thing you pay is your local sales tax. It'll be shipped to you. If you decide you want to sell Stamping Up, that is great. And if you don't, that's okay too. You can actually um, get the kit, enjoy your discount for your three to six month uh, span, and if you don't meet the $300 requirement, that's okay. You can drop out, have your kit and all your freebies, and enjoy stamping up. And if you do decide to stay in, that's great too. So uh, if you're interested in any of that or any of the products, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll give you all the details and all the information that you need to know. God bless and keep you. And until we meet again, remember what I always say, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in heaven. He is worthy. Be safe, be kind, and be generous and know that God loves you. And so do I. Until we stamp again, bye-bye.